அருட்பெரும் ஜோதி அருட்பெரும் ஜோதி தனி பெரும் கருணை அருட்பெரும் ஜோதி அருட்பெரும் ஜோதி அருட்பெரும் ஜோதி தனி பெரும் கருணை அருட்பெரும் ஜோதி so previous session we saw how uh, the principles make us how it basically helps us to lead our life and also how actually we turn to be what by following some of these principles and we did also went into the sutta sanmarga principles too and uh, we looked into how uh, who belongs to uh, sutta sanmarga right so today what we are going to see is like uh, uh, as a continuation of it we are going to see like what uh, what it leads what do we get out of it and uh, if that is followed halfway or that is not followed completely what are the benefits out of it so that's what we are going to start with and you know we'll just do a small refresher what we touched last time so who who belongs to sutta sanmargam permana clearly tells the person who has given up caste religion um everything basically complete without uh, without attachment and then controlling desire anger using uh, intellect it's just controlling not removing and avoid killing uh, and eating meat and then permana goes on to say like sutta samagis will avoid death difficulty old age and fear so if someone is in being that state they should avoid all these things so but what if uh, people who are practicing but halfway or you know they were not able to make it up is there any other uh, points regarding it yes when one are says we know that soul's natural character is compassion daiva so this artificial characters anything other than that has to be destroyed completely to avoid death if not at the event of god's grace they will be provided with worldly pleasures but not higher experiences Permana also referred refers this at uh, in a different uh, area too in uh, the great sermon like muyarchi illada vargal so people who are not putting that much effort in it when god's grace is there it will only help to give them worldly pleasures so people will be able to uh, attain whatever they are thinking whatever they want and you know they'll not have any uh, any problems with their day to day life so that is the worldly pleasures on a day to day basis like uh, whatever we are thinking will happening with uh, uh, with no pain things will happen automatically so that is the worldly pleasures but they will not be uh, experiencing uh, the higher uh, higher power or higher experiences so those things will not be there going into depth on it firmana uh, says uh, even maya is even two types sutta maya asutta maya and there are lots of uh, details into it so that is the reason basically and i think we will be touching uh, lots of those things uh, uh, in the future and uh, some of them are also going to come in uh, our content which we have planned for today so to reach these destination there are a set of milestones so we uh, when we go to, when we want to reach a destination what we do we just uh, plug in uh, our uh, destination into these maps google maps or uh, map my india or whatever we use and then if it's a long destination we have milestones there okay we reach this city we reach this city okay and then yo know, we are here we are here like that there are also milestones here and when we reach each milestone we will be aware like okay this point has been reached 
and this is the next point and okay now you know i am in this particular city this is being reached so like that there are my milestones in, uh, in our destination in sutta sanmarkam too the first one is called ema siddhi ema siddhi is transformation of body so we transform our body from the body which we have which is the impure body to a pure body to what is called as a sound body to what is called as a knowledge body or ulidegam so the transformation of body is the first step which is the aim as the and then removing all artificial characters so what we are doing right now is basically just controlling these artificial characters we cannot remove it completely so that is happening in here and also it's been said durguna maaye poi tholaindathu gnanam thondrida so the full knowledge comes after the maya has gone only after that only gnanam has is coming so to eradicate it to completely get rid of it is possible at this stage deathlessness so there are four uh, stages spirituality they say sari kriya yogam gnana so and each of them has their own uh, sub stage sub stages if you want to call this sari 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 kriya and then like kriya il sari kriya il Uh, kiriya kiril yogam kiril jnana so and then then comes yogam and then comes jnana so perumana basically takes us to the highest level there jnana the knowledge level you know that's because he, he that is where jnana til sariye that is what what is called as deathlessness jnana sariye uh, lots of uh, content about it to pick a representative of that is not going to be an easiest one but i just picked something which you want to be oh, share and let's go over this one porutalla num bogam ellam poyam ingudu naan pugaluvaden naadurum pundir kandaduve marutulagi irutulagil madivada alagallave so whatever we are enjoying here how much does it last is it lasting is that nithyam or is it anithyam so does is it like a short one or is it infinite is it an everlasting happiness anything whatever we take so that's the bog so all those things are nothing but life because we are running after this worldly pleasures basically and those we are running after the worldly pleasures because we are following the mind and any time that happens that will lead to death that's what it says in there marana mila peruval vil valavam min inge poruttiram ser sutta siva sanmarga nilayil porundume so you can lead a deathless life if you are following the sutta sanmargam and if you are in this state basically continuously you are following and if you are in this particular state okay porundume sirchavai amundam amudam arundumi here permana says sirchabai so we have to know what sirchabai is sirchabai is the center one point right in here in between the center in between the two eyebrows in the center right that one point so exactly not that point so if we have if we have a point going on straight from here and then another point right in the center of the head where it intersects 
right right in the center of the head that is the sircha bhai but the gateway for that is this eyebrow center so that will take it directly in there so what permana says is sircha bhai amudam arundhumi so there is a nectar from the sircha bhai if we consume that so sircha bhai amudam arindu min anbudane when when do we get that basically right anbu anbu we saw what last time uh, last time is right anmanegilshi it is not the uh, it, there is uh, not really a direct uh, uh, word right uh, which we are able to correlate that with the uh, colloquial language what we are using so that anmanegilshi arutiram ser enniyava raadumino so after that get the grace of the lord get the grace of the god then you can dance however you want nummai aduppavarai andri nindru taduppavar matrillai so at that time there is nothing who, who, which is going to stop you basically and everybody is going to come to you and there is nothing stopping in your way so this is what permana says about deathlessness and it just there are lots of content like this which keeps on going but this is the essence of it and finally merging with god so this one uh, we, as we know permana actually like uh, in uh, siddhivala gamma uh like uh, he uh, he was preparing uh, his uh, students his disciples you know telling them telling them like he is going to merge with god and then uh, he he went and lo- and he asked his uh, disciples to lock the door and uh, he said yeah you can open it but when you open it or when you are forced to open it i will not be there because kadavul enai kaati koda so god is not going to be uh myself to you all so he said that and he moved with god so how do we reach all those milestones that's the next question which comes right okay there are all these milestones in here there are the four milestones which we saw but how do we even reach it so there are disciplines which we got to really follow to reach it and uh, some of these disciplines we are gone through quite in detail in some of the previous session uh, you know not this particular section but some of the sessions uh, pertaining to uh, meditation and also food uh, but we will try to breeze through it but this this is what's called as tirunere 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 ondre adudan samarasa sanmarga sivaneri endru unarndi ulagi so this is this is basically god's discipline like you know to attain him so if if we want to attain something we just have to follow what is what is needed for that to happen right so and then he also says vallava sakti ellam peralam so once we follow it that is when we attain all these things all these milestones so what we will do is we will um, go over the disciplines now so we will go over uh, we'll start with the body and uh, it's pretty uh, it's pretty uh, easy to follow but the body we can think like there are two areas jnanendriyam and karmendriyam jnanendriyam is what basically we try to gain knowledge through we gain knowledge through our eyes through ears to hearing to smell and so on so and then karmendriyam so action the body parts which we use for performing actions walking uh like hands right and so on so for all these parts body parts there are some disciplines which we got to follow the reason why we have all these disciplines is those are the ones which is driving us nuts that is why it has to be disciplined 
So let's uh, go over it. So uh, do not hear unpleasant words. Hear divine chant, chanting only. So not to uh, not to hear lots of uh, things, right? The the unnecessary things. What we want, uh, what we hear, the more uh, trouble we get into. Right? We think about that a lot. Is it really even needed? So slowly trying to you know avoid it and hear lots of divine chant uh, chanting in it. So forbid touching with wrong intention. Always touch compassionately only. Pretty clear. Do not look uh, cruelly. Sometimes <laughs> it's uh, really tough when t- talking to people, right? Uh, is, and then he say like, okay, inimiyaga page, that it is, courteous talking, right? You don't know how people are going to react sometimes. Just with their eyes, you can see what to expect, right? Right? You know, the style, what they give it to you, you got to back up. And you're like, okay, do I even have to ask it? Right? So the courteousness is not there because everybody is, you know, I, it's, it's understood that everybody is busy and they're trying to do something, you know, trying to run, but we can always be courteous to one another, you know, when uh, somebody asks for help or even something. So that's what it is about. So aromatic smell. So our trying to, trying not to get uh, attached with these things is the main thing. You know, it's not like uh, using uh, a perfume. That's not what it's talking about. It's like not trying to get attached to this particular smell. Like, you know, this is what I wanted. So that attachment should not be there, even though you know that we are using. And forbid lies, not lying. When a life is in danger, by any means, rescue the life from danger. So we try, we try our best to save that life from danger. If, for instance, we're watching in a TV or something, if there is an ins- if that's not possible, at least we pray God. That's what Pirmanan says. Visit places where saints and sages reside. And the reason why we do that is that's where they do lots of uh, services to the community. Right? They help people. So we can be a part of it. We can learn something from it. We take some good thing out of it. That's the reason. Give and take always with good intentions. Even if we have to, you know, uh, spend money, always good with a good intention, right? Uh, it's always a good thing because the more we give, the more we get. Take food moderately. So this one is we want to eat, eat always, you know, when we are hungry. And then in moderation too. Have sexual enjoyment moderately. Then... Pass urine and motion appropriately without delay. This is something actually in the busy world which uh, we are uh, we are not following. And one uh, trend actually which I want to point out is uh, the rise uh, the race in uh, what's called as uh, prostate enlargement. Yeah, especially for uh, for men for men over forty and above, right? Uh, so controlling our uh, urine or uh, if there is difficulty in passing urine, that could be one reason could be prostate uh, gland enlargement. So it's definitely helpful to seek medical advice uh, soon as possible. The same thing with uh, with ways to with motion as well, right? Uh, so, but if there are troubles in in uh, in removing the waste, there are some techniques which has been specified too. And that could be due to whatever reason, right? It could be due to heat in the body or it could be the food which we consume through herbal means, through material means, through enema and all those things, uh, to breathing technique. And then uh, actually using uh, the, uh, using the pressing actually the left side, uh, using the right hand of the lower abdomen, concentrating on Mooladhara. So there are multiple techniques in there which can be followed. And uh, 
also like there are energy centers in our body. So what's the, the importance of covering all those energy centers in the genital area, in the head, chest, and uh, using footwear while walking and uh, not wearing dirty clothes too. Let's look into mind. With mind, actually, it is focusing and concentrating on Sitsubai on every time, except for the time which we do not uh, go to the bathroom, right? For uh, passing urine or motion, other than that permanent says every time just focus there. And if the focus goes outside, drag and try to keep it there, right? And do not try to find fault with others. We always love talking about others, gossiping. <laughs> That's one tough one. But do not find fault with others because everybody is at fault. Can we say anybody who is not fault? And the reason why we are uh, born is because there is some fault in there. Right? That's, that's why we are impure. So this fault is common. So we basically try to accept everything with it. There is a reason why five fingers are not the same size. Right? It just works in cohesion now perfectly, perfectly there. So have no self-respect. So once we start following everything, our ego will start kicking in. Like, okay, good. I know this. I know that. All those things would slowly start coming in here and there. Right? At that time, once if we start to think, okay, I know everything, that's it. Boom, it goes all the way down from there. So that doesn't help in spirituality, though. Uh, because we always have to follow a path like, okay, I don't know anything. That's, that's the way we got to uh, learn because there's still a lot of miles to travel. Like, uh, I think it's uh, words what says, miles and miles to go before I sleep. I think the woods are lovely, dark and deep, but I promise to keep miles to, and miles to go before I sleep, miles to go before I sleep. Do not get angry with others, but show frustration on your own characters. We don't want to be angry with others, but we got to show the frustration on our character because we are angry because we are not able to handle that anger. That's a fault in us, right? Somebody is making us angry by doing something. So what does that mean? We do not have the capability to control ourselves. That's what it means, basically. So we have to grow that capability so we are not angered by someone else's act. Right? We don't want to show frustration on that person. Instead, we want to sh show frustration inside us, on the character. Why, why are we getting anger? Right? Why, why did, where did it come from? Why should I be angry? Right? It's because it does, it's not good for us anyway. It's not uh, good for our body too. We saw all those things in detail previously. And finally, remove all artificial characters. Inherited and be sattvic. And that's, that's the goal, final goal actually of the regulation of mind. Okay, about the life. I think uh, last session we saw about uh, all these kind of madacharam, uh, all these kind of uh, acharangas which we have, right, marabacharam. So instead of that jnana acharam, which is through knowledge, jnana margam, right, it's through wisdom. But this knowledge is from internal, it's not from external. What I'm saying is also basically not knowledge, just looking at the book and coming and, you know, trying to translate, trying to say to the best of my knowledge. But it's not the right. So Jnana Til Sariya is basically a knowledge from internal. I mean, initially it will help to know everything. But that's not it. That knowledge, that experience has to come from internal. Right? So with the regulation of life, basically no discrimination against men or women on any basis on religion, caste, ethnicity, culture, 
country, region, upper class, lower class, ashram, or I'm thinking every life as same as oneself because that is exactly same as us. That is what is the discipline for life. Let's look at the discipline for soul. So from ant to elephant, without discrimination, treat one as yourself. Basically, that's the discipline for soul. Let's think about this in a little bit detail. All this tattvam, the mind, manam buddhi, siddham, alangaram, and all the body, uh, all these things are tattvam, right? All this tattva are there to help our soul. That is the, that is the goal of, uh, that is the reason why it was in the first place. But is that what is happening now? Is the question. Because all the body and mind are going on its own. I remember the song. Kanpona pokile kal pogalama. Now you can extend it. It's not just kan. It's all the other parts too. You can say like why pona pokile. So the, basically what's happening is the body and mind is collaborating pretty good. And you know, whatever the body wants, the mind actually, they are working cohesion. Everything is happening very good and just ignoring the real, the reality, which is the soul. So that's what's happening. The likes and dislikes, which is arising from the mind, right? Those things needs to be Controlled, they cannot be eliminated at this point, like how Permana uh, was uh, referring to there. But the intellect has to kick in there, and the control has to be there. And the control too is not possible in just one day. It might be for a couple of instances. Say, for instance, we want to control anger. Uh, and uh, we'll just uh, have an example that, uh, you know, uh, we get angry, I get angry at least uh, 20 times a day. So when starting control it, controlling it, it would be like, okay, in a month or so after good practice, it would be like 10. That's a pretty good uh, difference, right? And then slowly like uh, 8 and then 5. And then uh, after years of practice, it's probably only two, right? And then probably one, once in a while, after 10 years of practice. So it is possible. It's going to be slow. So that control of intellect is there because when it's getting controlled, when all the faculties are getting controlled, that is when it is basically going to help the soul. And that is the way which the purification needs to happen as Permana is saying that is how we got to purify it slowly like converting all those impure faculties into a pure one and slowly when that happens every single time even for a small occasion when that happens that is what will help the soul and mind eventually will get its own intellect and it will get used to it and it will automatically start think, it will start to take its own decision and it will start to control itself ariva kridiyakal manam ariva kridiyakal firmanar says so for that to happen we need to start uh, working on these things because soul's natural character is just compassion and God has hidden with the Maya completely. And in Agaval, if you remember, Kadavulin Marai Pai, Kadinavar Kingdom, Saktigal Marai Pai, Tavartavar Kingdom, right? Saktagal. So all these uh, Marai Pai, all these hidden stuff, we just want to say, Vanda Po, have to eliminate it. That is when we get the real pleasure of it. 
So and then after that, it, oops. <laughs> After that, what Permana is saying is, continue these practices for extended period of time. So we got to continue this practice for extended period of time. Follow the disciplines without any attachment. Meditate, praise God, compassion to other life, singing, get the character what we need to achieve the milestone. And for sure, we'll reach the milestone. That's what Permana is saying. Now what we're going to look at to is Yamasati. So we saw these types of body. Now the fun part begins. Is how or how does it look, right? When somebody gets this type of body, pure physical body, that's what it's called, Suttadeva. So the physical form is available. So it's going to be like us, it's going to be like everybody else. But there are divine feeling, divine consciousness, divine knowledge. It's almost like God. It's the body is like a purified 24 karat gold. It's golden color. It's like a body of 12 years old person, 12 years old kid, not person, kid, right? They're so energetic. They can take Anything, right? It's, uh, when we try to engage kids, we don't know even, uh, it's going to be a tough time engaging kids. So, it will be, the body will be like that of 12 years old kid. It will be free from gray hair, disease, old age. The excretion of waste and urine is not there at that time. There is no sweat. There is no need for food. There is no need for sleep. We don't feel thirsty. And when we go and stand in a uh, sun, there is going to be no shadow. There is an experience where uh, uh, it's documented uh, in uh, one of Permanar students. It was saying like uh, Permanar did uh, get a couple of students and uh, they were standing in a field. And Permanar was saying, this is, this is one of uh, the character traits of a pure body is that the shadow doesn't fall. Take a look at your shadow. All these shadows are there. But look at mine. Right? There wasn't any shadow there. Right? And then there, were, there was one other instance where uh, uh, they wanted to get a flagpole. Flagpole. And Permanar was uh, as, uh, asking his uh, student to go ahead and buy in a town. And the student wasn't clear, like, you know, what kind of uh, pole he has to get. So Permanar was saying, at the time, you know, there is no car and stuff. So they got to they gotta walk. So Permanar says, okay, fine, uh, go ahead uh, and I'll be there. The student doesn't understand. He's like, what's he even talking about? I got to walk all the way here. And he's saying, like, go ahead and I'll be there. So he said, okay, fine, whatever it is, let me just go. And uh, he, keep, he, keeps, uh, he keeps going towards the shop. He reaches there. And uh, Pirmanar was uh, standing, uh, standing there and he was saying like, okay, fine, you know what? Let's, uh, let's take this uh, uh, wood, right? This pole is pretty good. Um, take, make sure we get this one and, uh, you know, have all those things set up and uh, let's see there, right? And then... He walks off. He goes there. And this person actually gets the flagpole. Uh, and then, you know, he travels back. He comes back to the, uh, to where uh, the school is, where the place is. And he uh, communicates uh, to the student, like, oh, you know what? This pole was selected by Permanar. And, uh, and then, uh, the other student was like, what? What are you talking about? He was here all this time. You know, we were listening to him. Uh, to his class, right? He was going through all these things and how can he be there, right? So these are kind of siddhis which can happen. So let's talk about sound body or pranavadeya. So the body is also form and formless. So we can see the body basically, but uh, you cannot feel that. So when we touch, 
You can't get hold of it. That's what's called as pranavadekam. Divine feeling and consciousness, divine knowledge, principles of God, completely there. The purity of the body is such that it's it would be up to 108 carat. It's beyond our knowledge to understand all those things. You know, more what is more than 24 carat gold because 20 it's the purity of gold is measured using that carat. But what is the 108? It's beyond the knowledge, my knowledge. So it could be up to 108 carat. Five to eight years age of body. The body is seen but cannot be felt like how we saw. Capable of all siddhis. There are thousands and thousands of siddhis. Like anima, madima, all those things. So from nothing convert to a mountain. Convert a mountain to a sand. You know, lots of siddhis uh, which is being said. And uh, all those siddhis come with this. Knowledge body. So this is the third type of body under Amasiddhi, right? So this is divine knowledge, having all the powers, complete independence, nothing stopping, right? Infinite, pure gold of body. It's measurable. There's no way we can measure it. The body, which can be seen or unseen, is up to that person. That person can expose person doesn't have to expose it's up to that person it's eternal it's not bounded nothing can stop it so that is the kind of body in this knowledge body so let's see the tools which have been used so yeah we saw all these things right well before even going to this uh, tools use there is one good news about this, which Perumana also is saying, right? So, if we take a dry wood, if we take a dry a dry wood, and if there is fire on the wood, what happens? The fire just, you know, it just catches in an instance, right? Perumana is giving that example and tells when God is giving His grace, and if a person is so seasoned, a so seasoned, right, so well trained, he might get all this three body at the same time. So getting to that point might take a while, but depending on how that effort is put, it might come at the same time. So that is the good news. So, and also says, if the God's grace is also there on a person who is not seasoned, right? An untrained person. It is like burning a banana tree. It's not going to burn. That's not going to catch up. So that is the reason why I think it is basically that's the nature's law, right? It is, it's the effort has to be from every soul's perspective. From the every soul's side, the effort has to be there. And when the grace is there, depending on how much effort is put, they get it. Because for Pirmana, it was a full-time job, right? That was his only goal. He didn't even see anything. Even when people uh, came to him, knowing about all the Siddhis, what he, were, he was doing, he just... Uh, he was paying, he wasn't paying attention to all those things. Sometimes he was even like feeling bad. Oh, everybody's coming. They're thinking me as the God, but I'm not the God. They do not know because they haven't had a taste of the God. Right? He was so down to earth on that. Right? And he started uh, preaching Sutta Sanmargam and he's saying, Oh, this is what I have been doing. You know what happens when he started preaching and saying all those things. Eventually, people will be saying, I'll be back in a minute, right? Then they probably might have not even showed up. <laughs> That's probably what have happened, right? <laughs> so, yeah. So, for the external uh, stuff, for the external stuff, we are definitely attracted towards it. And that's what people were coming for. And that's what the students were coming. We were just to see all the 
uh, magical stuff which he has been doing, right? They wanted to see all those things in action, but they weren't really that much interested to get there, though. Okay. Anyway, coming back. <laughs> so there are tools for anything. Tools would definitely help us to cut a uh, wood log or whatever, you know, uh, how long would it take a, uh, to cut a wood log using the saw? It might take a long time. If we have an electric saw, it's pretty easy. A metal saw, it's pretty easy. Just we keep the saw in there and zzz, just goes in like that, right? Because it's seamless there. So tools always helps us, external. Same thing, internal too. So our tool for getting to the other side of the river using the boat, right? The boat is our uh, life actually. We have two oars which we can row to the other side. And one is like parobagara, benevolence, and satpicharam, which is introspection. So whatever we have been talking in, can be just said in those two things, parobagara, satpichara. So what is parobagara? So those are the two things which we used for navigating to get to the other side. Accordingly, you know, if there is a storm or if there is clear path, whatever it is, use those things to navigate. So Parobagaram is basically helping of souls to the body. So if we have, if some soul is in a difficulty, right, they're going through a difficult situation and they are in need of dire help. We, even if through the body we have to help, you know, they help, we help with the body. Sometimes they might, what they might need is just ideas from it, nothing more, you know, just ideas, you know, pointing them to the right direction. At that time, through the mind, we help with the mind. And sometimes we don't know, even need those. What we might need is because we are really not we, we won't have an idea or we might not be able to help them. What we might be able to do is, is some sweet words is what is needed. So at the time, words do matter. And what it needs is words, just some words there. So nice words actually, which would help them, you know, which would comfort them. That's what's all needed. Nothing more than that. And next one is through wealth. If you have wealth or someone very is struggling to meet their end needs, end needs, then you can help with, the, with whatever we have. And if we don't have wealth, that's also good too. I, what we have to do, we have to pray for, pray to God for that particular soul, right? So hopefully things get better for him because I do not have the power to give him. So that is Parobagara. And you know, we're seeing compassion, right? So that is our Parobagara in there. So with Parobagara, that leads to love. That leads to Anmaneya. Anmaneya, right? We saw that in the first one. And through that, we get grace. And through grace is how we experience the higher power, the internal experience, you know, it's the knowledge, not from the books, but through our experience. So that is through compassion. So let's see what Parobagaram is. Parobagaram is we are basically introspecting ourselves. This is another uh, big topic, and hopefully, you know, we get a chance to discuss that later. Okay. Like uh, but this one, Parobagaram, is introspecting us. We are trying to think what is our state? What is God's state? And then praising God. And then Thinking about the shortcomings of us, right? The deficiency of us. 
that is what is parobagara or intros introspection right and then we hand over all of our issues to god well for uh, fun actually you can try this exercise try to think about whenever you are free try to just think about the shortcomings of us and see if you are able to think anything it would be a very good exercise right and try to see or try to praise god for what we, he had given to us and think through it if you want you can write it either way you know just think through it and also do for uh, you know just to extend to that it's very easy to praise oneself because that's what we have been doing for the whole time right so just think through this thing and see uh, and see your experience and see what uh, you come with and uh, hopefully you know we get to uh, uh, talk uh, this about pretty detail in some of our uh, next sessions so these two satvicharam the introspection and the benevolence right the parobagara helping through body through mind through words through wealth right through all means basically right through however we can are both the tools I mean if we cannot remember any of those things this too put it in a concise manner like what we got to pretty much and the combination of it will lead to our success so with this actually we will end this uh, we will end this session and this topic as well and i'll hand this over to uh, gandhi anaya arup perin jodi thank you everybody for uh, listening and uh, coming to this session and enjoy your day as well bye so oh.